Good morning, Sunday morning, June 7th, and although we're gathering at church on June 7th, all things being equal, we're going to go ahead and set this uh, on video ahead of time, just in case there's any last-minute cancellations or should the governor flare things up again and, and uh, ask us to shut our doors again. We want to be faithful stewards and get these out to our church family. We've begun preaching a series entitled Our Coming King out of 1 Thessalonians. We looked at chapter 1 and we discussed what a healthy church looks like and we took a couple weeks kind of walking through those verses and talking about the principles involved there that we need to be filled with the things that the early church was filled with and we need to be encouraged as a healthy church. And then chapter 2, we're going to begin looking at the idea of, of in light of our coming king, how do we do ministry? And last time we said we need to be passionate, verses 1 through 6. There ought to be a, an urgency and an energy about what we do. We ought to have passion for what God's called us to do in ministry because he is coming again and we should have an excitement about it. Then we also need to be parental. Uh, verse 12 especially reminds us the urgency of that parental relationship that we need to have and all the various things associated with that. We want to pick up at uh, verse 13 this morning. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as in the truth, the word of God, which effectively worketh also in you that believe. I want to take just a minute and tell you that I believe for us to be practicing the ministry the way God's called us to, in light of the fact that he is coming again, we need to be prepared. I want to just stress to you the urgency of being prepared to embrace the word of God. Look at verse 13 again. We thank God that without ceasing, because you received the word that we preached, not as the word of men, but as the word of very God. You received it as truth, the word of God. And notice it, it must be entered in. It must be received. The early church here at Thessalonica, Paul says, you received the word which you heard. You received it not as the word of men, but you received it as the truth that it is, the very word of God. We must be willing to embrace the word of God. We must let it enter us. We must receive it. Not the word must enter us, but the word must energize us. Did you see what he said there in closing of verse 13? This word, which is the word of God, which works affectionately also in you that believe. There's that principle of it working effectually, it changing us, it energizing us, it giving us power and, and the promise of God and the word of God and filling us with his knowledge and filling us with his essence and understanding who God is through his word and through our relationship with it. I believe that we must be prepared to receive the word of God. I want to tell you something, just showing up at church doesn't mean you're prepared to receive the word of God. Have you spent time asking God to help your heart receive his word? When you listen to these videos or when you come to a worship service or when you even read your personal copy of the scripture, do you ask God to let it change you? Do you ask God to let it enter you and energize you? In light of Jesus' soon coming, we must be prepared to embrace the very word of God. Because secondly, today, we need to also be prepared to encounter the wicked. Look at verses 14 through 16. For you, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For you also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And they please not God, and they are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. Fill up their own sin always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. I want you to understand, Paul said there's an important principle here. Let's let the word of God embrace us because there's coming a time where we're going to encounter the wicked. We need to be receiving the word and letting the word energize us because that time will come when we'll encounter people who will hate us because we love the truth. Notice in verse 14, he reminds us that they suffered. They literally experienced pain because of their belief. They went through persecution. Now, I'm going to be real blunt here. A lot of Americans talk about being persecuted. And I just, you don't understand persecution. Most Americans have never seen it. But I want to challenge you to be prepared to encounter the wicked. Be prepared to understand that the very people who killed the Lord and their own prophets, they also persecuted Paul. They don't care to please God. They don't care what men say. They do their own deeds. Now he's referencing here the Jews, of course, who persecuted and killed the Lord. And now they're persecuting and trying to hinder the work of God through his servants. 
Paul says, they will experience the wrath of God. I want you to understand something extremely important here. We need to be willing to embrace the word of God because we need to be prepared to encounter the wicked. But he gives us a real powerful blessing right here. Look at me in verses 17 through 20. Be prepared to embrace the witness. Embrace those you win. Look at him in verse 17. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. I want to tell you something. I believe with all of my heart what he's trying to tell us here is we need to be prepared as servants doing ministry in our corner of the world, doing ministry in our local church, doing the very little things maybe that God's called us to do, but they have such an important impact as people come to faith in Christ. We need to be prepared to embrace those that we're witnessing to. Notice clearly what he says here. I long to be in the presence of those of you who God has allowed me to touch. I would come, but Satan has hindered us. We abundantly, verse 17, want to see your face. We, we desire to see your face. Can I tell you something? There is no greater joy. You know, as a parent, that first child's born, and man, that first time you get to hold them, it's just, boy, grandkids, you know, and I, I tell you, great thing about being a pastor is I get to go and all the babies are born, and I get to love on them and hug on them and, and take my picture with them and just, just bless them. Man, it's just a great joy to get to hold that new child. And that's the great joy when somebody comes to saving faith in Christ. We get to give them a hug and hold them and tell them God loved them and how God changed them. And we get to be a part of that because God used us through the ministry of His Word to redeeming them. We need to be prepared to witness. We also need to understand that during that time as we witness, there will be opposition. The enemy doesn't like it when we're preaching the gospel. The enemy doesn't like it when lost people are coming to faith in Christ. We need to embrace those we witness. And notice very clearly, we need to embrace those we win to Christ. Oh, what a joy, he says. Look at verse 19. The day is coming. Can you imagine when we all get together in heaven and you get to say thank you to everybody that had a part in your salvation experience? Certainly, we'll worship at the feet of Jesus. That's where I plan to be. But I'm longing to talk to some people who helped me along the journey, aren't you? Those who loved me when I didn't deserve to be loved. Those who cared for me when I was a little kid in Sunday school and the youth needed a little encouragement. Those who encouraged me along the way of my ministry. Those godly men and women who sacrificed and loved and encouraged me. Oh, I want to see them someday. But I long to see those that I had the joy of sharing Jesus with. Just like a parent. Oh, folks, we've got to be prepared. We must be prepared to embrace the word. We must be prepared to encounter the wicked. And we must be prepared to embrace, I like to say, enjoy our witness. Enjoy those we've won and see a great blessing. Heard a wonderful story this week. Many of you heard that Ravi Zacharias, one of the great Christian uh, preachers, a, an apologist, a really a brilliant man. He, he could tell a story better than anybody. And he could take all the facts and he could argue all the different religions. And he represented Christianity at the Mormon Tabernacle and thousands of debates through the years. But I heard this week, Ravi came to saving faith in Jesus Christ through a Gideon testament. Now, I got to thinking about that. All the people through the ages, over 100 years now, over 2 billion testaments have been passed out by our friends in the Gideon ministry. Debbie and I have been happy to support the work of the Gideons through the years. We've been honored to host them at our churches through the years. But can you just think with me for a minute the joy of that Gideon who placed that Bible that Ravi Zacharias read and his works do follow him. I think of that great story of that Sunday school teacher who led that great evangelist to the Lord. Can you think about the influence that you have on one? What a great joy it is. Now, folks, we need to be prepared to do ministry by embracing the Word. We'll never be effective in ministry without a solid foundation on the Word of God. Secondly, 
we need to be prepared to expect and encounter the wicked. The enemy hates it when we're sharing the gospel, when we're studying the word, and when we're working hard. Trying to bring Jesus to the masses. and Trying to bring the masses to Jesus. But we need to embrace and enjoy the witness, the wins. Those that someday we'll get to celebrate forever. Who shared Jesus with us. And those in turn that we shared Jesus with. I hope today you know the Lord Jesus. If you're not certain that you have a personal and growing relationship with the Lord Jesus, that's our goal as a church, to help you in that relationship. We'd love for you to reach out to us. Our, our web address is fbc-sellersburg.org. And on the home page there, you can see a link for the gospel. Or you can find the link for our staff with our email addresses there. And we'd love to help you any way we can to be confident you know the Lord Jesus. Matter of fact, we'd encourage you right now, if you're not certain, to pray a very simple prayer. Asking God to help you. Recognizing that you're a sinner and asking God to forgive you of your sin as you turn to Him in repentance. Just pray a prayer. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I right now turn to you and repent of my sin. And I embrace Jesus I ask him to forgive me and to cleanse me and make me new. And the Bible tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, call on him today. And if you've been faithfully serving the Lord through the years, don't be discouraged. Just keep embracing the word. And when the days are over, when the accounts are settled, embrace and enjoy the victory through our Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that your word would speak to hearts. It would accomplish what you desire for it to accomplish. And that you would get all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you.